Oh, hey. <laughs> okay, so, so I'm, 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 I'm guessing you here for the 15 minute study review. Okay, well, I got something for you. Stay tuned. I'm gonna give you everything you need to succeed your A, your way. You talk to Professor Harris right now. And uh, I'm going to make sure I streamline all this information, all this material, so that anywhere you're at, when you're away from your notes, all you got to do is click this video and you'll get everything you need in the order of the next test. So this is the research methods exam one study guide audio form for all my audible learners. That's your learning type. I want to cater to that right now. Other students have said that this has been a great feature for them. So I'm trying to keep it going. And without further ado, let's go. All right. So chapter one, the first thing you want to know is exploration, descriptive and explanatory. These are purposes of social research, something to look out for which one is not one of the four purposes of social research. And if you go back into your notes, you know that three of those are exploration, descriptive and explanatory. What you want to make sure you don't bubble in is implementation that we didn't talk about implementation. It is, it has nothing to do with uh, one of the four purposes. So keep that in mind. Now let's move into measurement of validity. Now we want to talk about the three types of validity in social research. Those include measurement, causal and external validity. Keep that in mind. We're streamlining this. I know y'all have all this stuff in your notes already, but right now we are consolidating everything so that it is in one place you can access at one time in 15 minutes. All right, so let's go into chapter two. Chapter two, if you have your study guide pulled up as I'm going over this key takeaways, but what is deductive research and inductive research and then what is descriptive research. So hopping into chapter two, what is a theory? A theory is a logically interrelated set of propositions about reality, right? So it's a set of interrelated propositions. So you're proposing, uh, a theory about a certain concept. Remember that keyword there, interrelated, interrelated set of propositions. That is a theory according to research methods. Next, what type of research starts with theoretical premises and then deduces specific explanation or expectation? That is deductive research, all right? We're talking about deductive research and deductive research always th starts out with a theory now we're going to talk about inductive research now this this type of research starts off with data so make sure you know that so deductive research starts off with a theory inductive research starts off with data now descriptive research this is the research that you're making generalizations for. So specifically, and according to the text, it's the type of research that you start with data, but then proceeds into making generalization. So if I'm, I'm making generalizations about some data, that means I'm describing data, thus the term district descriptive research. So you have that you have inductive, deductive and descriptive research. And now we can move on to chapter three. So chapter three is ethics in research. Core takeaways in this chapter, the three ethical principles. What is the purpose of the IRB? What are the guidelines of ASA? And what, what are the requirements of informed consent? So let's get into that. What are the three ethical principles? Respect for persons, beneficence, and justice. I'm gonna keep it right there. What institution is in charge of reviewing all research proposals? the Institutional Review Board. They're the institution that is in charge of reviewing all research proposals. Now we're going to go into the ASA, the American Sociological Association. What is the key takeaway in that? The key takeaway is the part of the rule that states research should cause no harm to subjects. 
So we're putting the participants first. Yes, we may be passionate about our research. We want to figure something out. Um, but at no time in our research should we put our participants at risk, right? Which of the following is a requirement for informed consent? One of the key requirements when it comes to informed consent, participants must be fully informed about the nature of the research. You can't leave nothing out. You need to be transparent with them, clear and upfront um, at the beginning because that is the first step in informed consent. Chapter four. All right, so what is a concept? Keyword here, mutually agreed upon mental images. So, you know, I'm seeing something and what confirms it is you can see it too. Do you see that? Is that a spider? That's a spider. You see that, right? Yeah, see, I told you that's a spider. So mentally agreed upon mental images summarizes a set of familiar observations or ideas. Dang, that was, that was kind of scary, wasn't it? Did you, did you feel that? How did you feel? When, see, that confirms it, you know? They, they, you know, so similar set of observations, feelings, or ideas. The process of operationalization. It is the bridge between, from constructs to observation. Remember that, conceptualization. The bridge from constructs to observation and measurement. The process of speci specifying the way you measure your concept. The, if there's a process where you have to specify how you're going to measure your concept. And that process is called operationalization. Anyway, now we're gonna move into variable criteria and be done with chapter four. And what you need to know when it comes to variable criteria is um, this statement. It's, it closely identifies with this, which is the attributes of composing a variable must consider all possible aspects and must be mutually exclusive, this or that, mutually exclusive. So that was four, and we're going over to five. Chapter five, the first thing we want to know is what simple random sampling is. This is the sampling that strictly identifies with the basis of chance. So literally like flipping a coin, assigning heads to one category and tails to another category, and that's how you pick your individuals based on those two sides of the coin. Just, you know, simple random sampling. The basics of chance. So please make sure that you underline that, highlight the basis of chance. Okay, so we're gonna hop into chapter six, uh, causal claim. Uh, Criteria of causal claim will be empirical association, temporal ordering, and non-spirosness. Now, according to research methods in sociology, you definitely want to walk away with knowing the definition of an experiment. And it states, a test under controlled conditions in which the dependent variable is manipulated by the researcher in order to study the effect on the dependent variable. So that's an experiment. So those two, the effects of the dependent variable has on the independent variable and vice versa. Uh, and it is also a test under controlled conditions, right? Controlled by the researcher. This test under controlled conditions uh, where the independent variable is manipulated by the researcher, then tested on the dependent variable is known as an experiment, right? Full circle, that's what it is. So we only have a few more left. So I promise, I know you've been sitting with me and you're like, oh, you know. You know, patience is one of those golden things in our society, and I uh, really appreciate you guys for sitting tight, all for the sake of you receiving an A. All right, two experiments. Cases that are randomly assigned to comparison groups. So a true experiment, not a quasi-experiment, but a true experiment, are the cases that are randomly randomly selected and applied to a comparison group where uh, you know a quasi experiment those are experiments where you are trying to do everything in your po power to make sure that your control group and your test groups are uh, evenly evenly picked right 
but at, in a true experiment, you, it's all by chance. You probably use the simple random sampling method of flipping a coin. So you definitely want to remember that. To dive into the strengths of an experiment. So the strength of an experiment, you have high causal validity because you're testing something out. You're not, uh, you're, you're observing it, it's controlled. Um, your general measurability or is in validity is very high and experiments can be duplicated or replicated at any time and tested on different populations t for validity so um because you have an experiment a set template in an experiment at hand you can test that uh, hypothesis and use different independent variables on dependent variables right so that's um so, but if you see something that's called, that's called low external validity or generalizability, you know, that's not, that's not considered a strength in experiments. Just a heads up, freebie, if you will. So chapter seven, then we have about four more left, four more points, and that will be it. Chapter seven goes over survey research. This is the last chapter of our first exam. So. The survey instrument that contains questions in a self-administered survey. In a self-administered survey, I'm not there. You take you take my survey independently. This is called a questionnaire, right? I'm not um, there asking you these questions. Now you take you take it. That's a questionnaire. The survey instrument that has the questions that that I have that the interviewer has in person or even over the phone that's called an interview schedule so when you hear this when you see the words in person or over the phone that's an interview schedule when you, when it when it says the researcher is there in person and it's administered by the researcher that's an interview schedule if you see self administered survey that is a questionnaire remember that a hey. You definitely want to make sure, um, <laughs> so if you mail your survey in the mail, that is the lowest response rate. You will not get that much data because just face it, think about how many times we check our mail. If, if it's not a bill or some money, we, we throw it away, right? We even throw like coupons away, even like the good ones. <laughs> and also remember that the highest uh, response rate or the most successful method when it comes to surveys is going to be which one? Yep, in person survey. So you got it. In person, you know, you can, if you are ask, asking them certain questions and you, that you feel that they don't, they don't feel, you know, too confident in, 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 in the question or, or even if the whole experience is kind of going going south, going sour, because of the questions that you're answer, asking them or the way or the tone, you can kind of, in person, you are there to identify those uh, on the spot, um, micro expressions or verbal cues that can tell you that, hey, maybe I should kind of switch up my delivery or instead of asking them this question on the survey because I can see where this is going let me let me skip it let me re reword it or ask them another one let me save that one to the end so you get the most out of uh, of the research when you are doing the in-person interview or uh, survey all right so that concludes the whole study guide so now we're just consolidating everything squeezing out the good stuff uh, finding those golden nuggets, if you will, so that you generally know, um, you know, what it is to do the beginning stages of research methods. So thank you for tuning in. I hope this helped you out as it would for me as I am an audible learner. But again, this is Professor Harris, your A, your way, mastering learning types and making a more inclusive environment for you, the student. See you next time.